vote for him, and I still am opposed to him quite a few times, but I was proud that he did this, and I was just about to stand on my feet and clap and give him a standing ovation, and then I heard, well, but if I lose the vote, I'll probably go ahead and do the bombing anyway. And so it does concern me. I, I want to be proud of the president, but every time I'm just about there, then I get worried that really he doesn't mean it, that he's going to sort of obey the Constitution if he wins. So I heard Secretary Kerry say, if we win, sure. But if we lose, what? I mean, make me proud today, Secretary Kerry. Stand up for us and say, you're going to obey the Constitution, and if we vote you down, which is unlikely, by the way, but if we do, you would go with what the people say through their Congress, and you wouldn't go forward with a war that your Congress votes against. Can you give me a better answer, Secretary Kerry? I can't give you a different answer than the one I gave you. I don't know what the president's decision is, but I will tell you this. It ought to make you proud because he still has the constitutional authority, and he would be in keeping with the Constitution. Well, I disagree with you there. I don't believe he has the constitutional authority. I think Congress had his, has this. Madison was very explicit. When he wrote the Federalist Papers, he wrote that history supposes, or the Constitution supposes what history demonstrates, that the executive is the, most, is the branch most likely to go to war, and therefore the Constitution vested that power in the Congress. It's explicit and runs throughout all of Madison's writings. This power is a congressional power, and it is not an executive power. They didn't say big war, small war. They didn't say boots on the ground, not boots on the ground. They said declare war. Ask the people on the ships launching the missiles whether they're involved with war or not. If we do not say that the Constitution applies, if we do not say explicitly that we will abide by this vote, you're, you're making a joke of us. You're making us into theater. And so we play constitutional theater for the president. If this is real, you will abide by the verdict of Congress. You're probably going to win. Just go ahead and say it's real, and let's have a real debate in this country and not a meaningless debate that in the end you lose and you say, oh, well, we had the authority anyway. We're going to go ahead and go to war anyway. A couple of items. Senator, I assure you there's nothing <laughs> meaningless. And there is everything real. Only if about you adhere to what we vote on. Here. Only if our vote makes a difference. Only if our vote is binding, is it meaningful. And I will leave to the man who was elected to be president of the United States the responsibility for uh, telling you what his decision is if and when that moment came. But the president intends to win this vote, and he's not going to make prior announcements. We've, we've had a lot of discussion about, you know, whether or not. We're going to make the world safer with this. Somehow we're going to have less chemical weapons. But I think that's an open question. And I think it's conjecture at best. You can say, oh, well, we think Assad will be less likely to launch chemical weapons after this. We may be able to degrade his capacity somewhat. He's got 1,000 tons. We're going to wipe it out. Most reports I hear say we're not even probably going to directly bomb chemical weapons because of what might happen to the surrounding population. So my guess is he still will have the ability. Most people say... Assad acted very illogically. Why would he release chemical weapons on his own people when it brought the anger and enmity of the entire world? So he's already acting irrationally or illogically. Now we're going to deter him, and he's going to act in a rational manner. I think it's equally likely that he either does it again or he doesn't do it. I don't think you can say for certain which is better. I don't know that we can say that by attacking them, he's not going to launch another chemical attack. Will well, the region, will the region, I've got a few of them, then I'll, I'll, I'll stop. Will the region be more stable or less stable? We all say we want stability in the Middle East, and stability in the Middle East is a national interest for our country. Will it be more stable or less stable? I, I frankly think there are equal arguments on both sides of that. Will Israel be more likely to suffer an attack on them, a gas attack or otherwise, or less likely? I think there's a valid argument for saying they'll be more likely to suffer an attack if we do this. Will Russia be more likely or less likely to supply more arms and get more heavily involved in this? I think there's a valid argument that they may become more likely to be involved. Iran, more likely or less likely to be involved with this? If Iran gets involved, more likely or less likely that Israel launches a, a reprisal attack on Iran? There are all kinds of unknowns that I can't tell you absolutely the answer, and neither can you. But I think there's a reasonable argument that the world may be less stable because of this and that it may not deter, deter any chemical weapons attack. So what I would ask is, how are we to know? How are we to go home? I haven't had one person come up to me and say they're for this war. Not one person. 
We get calls by the thousands. Nobody's calling in favor of this war. I didn't meet one. I was home all month. I went to 40 cities. I didn't have one person come up and say, do they all agree it's a horrendous thing? Yes, we all agree the chemical attacks are a horrendous thing, but people are not excited about getting involved. They also don't think it's going to work. And they're, they're skeptical of uh, what will occur with this. But I'd, I'd appreciate your response and try to uh, reassure the rest of us, one, that the vote is meaningful and valid, that you'd adhere to it, and also that you're convinced that all of these different items will be better, not worse, by this attack. Well, Senator, I'd be very happy to do that. Uh, will Israel be more likely to suffer an attack, or will they be safer? Will they be less safe? Uh, I can make it crystal clear to you that Israel will be less safe unless the United States takes this action. Iran and Hezbollah are two of the three biggest allies of Assad. And Iran and Hezbollah are the two single biggest enemies of Israel. So if, if, if Iran and Hezbollah are advantaged by the United States not curbing Assad's use of chemical weapons, there is a much greater likelihood that at some point down the road, Hezbollah, who has been one of the principal reasons for a change in the situation on the ground, will have access to these weapons of mass destruction. And Israel will for certain be less secure. But I would also now argue that it would be more finish. likely that Hezbollah will attack because of this attack in response. Uh, and Israel feels quite confident of its ability to deal with Hezbollah if they were to do so. You will notice that Israel has on several occasions in the last year seen fit to deal with threats to its security because of what's in Syria, and not once has Assad responded to that to date. I think there are a bunch of things we should talk about in a, in a classified session, but let me just make it uh, very clear to you that, uh, uh, you know, you ask these questions, will this or that be more likely to happen or not likely to happen? If the United States of America doesn't do this, Senator, is it more or less likely that Assad does it again? You want to answer that question? I don't think it's known. I don't think is it's it more or less likely the, that he does do it again. Have the attack? I think it's unknown whether it's more it's or less unknown. likely whether you have the attack. Senator, it's not unknown. If the United States of America doesn't hold him accountable on this with, the, with our allies and friends, it's a guarantee Assad will do it again. A guarantee. And I urge you to go to the classified briefing and learn that. Secondly, let me just point out to you that with respect to uh, uh, this question of Americans wanting to go to war. You know, you got three people here who have been to war. You got John McCain who's been to war. There's not one of us who doesn't understand what going to war means, and, and we don't want to go to war. We don't believe we are going to war in the classic sense of taking American troops and America to war. The president is asking for the authority to do a limited action that will degrade the capacity of a tyrant who has been using chemical weapons to kill his own people. But I think by doing so, you announce... It's a limited. You, you it's annou limited. By doing so, you announce in advance that your goal is not winning. But, but that's not and I think the last 50 years of secretaries of defense would say... Senator, if your when, goal when is not people to are win, asked, shouldn't be do you want to go to war in Syria? Of course not. Everybody, 100% of Americans will say no. We say no. We don't want to go to war in Syria either. It's not what we're here to ask. The president is not asking you to go to war. He's not asking you to declare war. He's not asking you to send one American troop to war. He's simply saying we need to take an action that can degrade the capacity of a man who's been willing to kill his own people by breaking a nearly 100-year-old prohibition, and will we stand up and be counted to say we won't do that? That's, that's not, I don't, you know, I just don't consider that going to war in the classic sense of coming to Congress and asking for a declaration of war and, and training troops and sending people abroad and putting young Americans in harm's way. That's not what the president is asking for here. General, do you want to speak of that all to that? Uh, no, not really, Secretary. Thank you for offering. <laughs> <laughs> I pull the rug out from under